Well, uh, you know, we did, uh, we, we have talked about the quarterback situation a little, but Ferris, um, you know, there is a scenario and even in practice, apparently they've been running this a little bit. Um, but we discussed TJ and I last Tuesday, um, if they decide not to pick, uh, one guy and, you know, we're kind of not sure TJ believes they'll probably pick one guy, uh, since Texas is game two. Um, I think it may be Alex Orgy or, or this idea I'm about to talk about, but we, we, uh, br- I brought up the idea of a two quarterback system like 2021 mm-hmm. when Michigan ran a KJJ two quarterback system and won a big 10 championship with that system. Um, Ferris, you know, as, as uh, somebody who's broken some of this stuff down, how could you envision a two quarterback system running in the 2024 season. If they decide to go with two guys under center instead of just one. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you some highlights. Uh, so yeah. first of all, I recorded and it's an 18 minute video. I go into Excel spreadsheets. I show actually JJ throwing, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, on, on, uh, and kind of talking about how, how JJ could be replaced. Um, you know, in, in my world, uh, Denegal is the starter, but there's a question mark as to who the third quarter starter is. Now, I know some of us might think that if you have two quarterbacks, kind of that, that means maybe you have none because you don't have a true number one. But I think maybe the skill sets are different enough that, that, that this could work. Uh, I do think this is a hypothetical has less than 50, 50 chance of happening. But what I would do is I would say, let's make Denegal the starter. The, the third quarter starter is a question mark. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, if uh, Michigan's up by 10 points and it's in the third quarter, let Orgy stay and let him eat the clock, you know, that kind of thing. If uh, Michigan's behind Denegal's passing more, mm. um, uh, later in the year, maybe Tuttle is actually getting some reps and Denegal and Tuttle are kind of competing for the starting spot, so to speak. Mm. Um, I think in chat last year or last week, I said, uh, you know, maybe Denegal could get 60 percent of the snaps and Orgy could get 60 percent of the snaps because Michigan can give 120 percent. That was a great line. I now, like that. I, like I actually mean that could happen, but in a little bit different way. Uh, actually, when I did the math, I think Orgy needs more snaps than Denegal, but but maybe Denegal could be the starter, get 60% of the snaps, but Orgy could actually be in, not as a quarterback, but as some other threat, as a um, you know some other um, threat on the field at the same time as Denegal for another 20% of snaps. Uh, so for all of, you know, it, it, this, you know, a lot of this, as I kind of mentioned, is is hypothetical, but I do think in order for this to happen, it, it can happen. In order to ha- for it to happen, the O line, the the receivers have to be adaptable for t- to two different quarterbacks, and neither quarterback, you know, needs to have that rhythm. You know, you hear about quarterbacks needing to have reps, and then they kind of build a rhythm, they get into the flow, that sort of thing. You know, can a quarterback sit for 15, 20, 25 minutes at a time? and then just come in and perform, you know, that's a question mark. Um, you could have two different systems. You could have a orgy 70s style kind of system. And then, and then, uh, you know, Denegal is a more traditional or more traditional, more modern system. Right. So, um, but as I mentioned, orgy would also need to throw when he's in, he needs to throw multiple times long, and he needs to complete at least one per game, a, a 20 yard mm-hmm. pass, maybe a um, pass interference, you know, something like that. It's something that's long uh, so that th- that threat is there. So, so um, you know, keeping the defense honest. So in order for this to work, those are the kind of things that could happen. When I did the math, basically, you know, what we're looking at is uh, a run heavy offense with Orgy. He's only passing maybe seven times a game a pass heavy offense with Denegal. Michigan's only running about 10 times a game when, when Denegal's in there and passing much more. 
add all the numbers up and you get to the numbers that JJ was able to JJ leading the offense was able to do last year, uh, you know, get to a, a, a comparable um, quarterback rating and uh, you know, in the, in the equal number of snaps, but it, it kind of depends on um, you know, who's in there, whether it'll be more run heavy or pass heavy. Do you right. what, what's your take? Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. I mean, I think statistically it may, sh those numbers may show uh, a similarity to like a JJ production. Right. But I think the, the one issue with uh, quantitative data is uh, the qualitative, right? So right. Um, I would argue potentially depending who's in the huddle, the team may not respond as well. And that that's a potential question that, you know, that would need to be, answered like you know how does the offensive line how do the wide receivers respond to whoever's given the play call you know because you see that with teams sometimes when they're trying to juggle two quarterbacks you know maybe a quarterback just has better command of the huddle and that could potentially be the uh you know the the, the what determines who is the leader but I, I think um I think you might be onto something in the sense of if orgy cannot become the passer we need him to be you may see something like what Ferris is talking about because Denigal is the more accurate passer. He has the better arm. We know this already, but he's, his ceiling isn't as high, right? But with, with Orgy, his ceiling is through the roof. You know, it's through the roof. So uh, it really just comes down to Orgy's ability to throw the ball, and that will determine are we going to be looking at a two-quarterback system or are we going to have one single caller? So it's something interesting to think about. So two, two points, and then we'll go, because uh, two points I want us to chew on. Um, so, so the first, the first being, we did see two completions by Alex Orgy in last year's spring game. It was a medium ball and a short range ball. If the, if, if you multiply that by 10 ish, 15, depending on the game, if it's like a Purdue situation where like JJ had to th throw and go over 300 yards, maybe it's more right. But if, if we can see that times 10, 15, and then his running ability, plus the ability, of course, to hand off to a Donovan Edwards or a Ben Hall or a Khalil Mullings, like if he gets to 70% completion, is that enough for him to just be quarterback one, uh, uh, start with TJ? 70? 70, absolutely. But I mean, I'm hoping for like 62. If you can get to 62% completion, because anything above 65 yeah. is good. Anything okay. above 65 is good. Um, you know, we, we need him to be, if he can be 62, it's his. Anything less than yep. 62, you could see okay. the you could see the two quarterback system if we don't go portal shopping. But for our, for, for this discussion's sake, um okay. yeah, I think uh 62 is the number I'm looking for. Okay. Ferris? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, I mean, just some some comparisons here. I, I, I did put in the chat, uh, you know, kind of Milrow versus J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy was 72%, so very, mm. very high. Yeah. Milrow was uh, 66%, um, still very good. His, uh, uh, you know, according to sports reference, which I consider the gold standard of, of statistics uh, for sports, uh, Milrow had a 172.2 passing efficiency rating. It was even higher than J.J. McCarthy. I point this out to say not that Milrow is better than J.J. McCarthy. I just point it out to say that Alex Orgy 2024, I don't think, can replicate J.J. and he cannot replicate what, what Milrow did as a passer. You know, I, I don't think that's realistic. We, we have to be realistic. Um, so, uh, you know, Milrow, 66% passing. Uh, yeah, if, if, if uh, Orgy is at 60, you know, that that, that would be – you know, kind of, I, I would think of that as kind of an optimistic, you know, positive uh, kind of thing. Now, if if he has fewer pass attempts, I see Rashad's comment about only seven passes. Yeah, if he has few, fewer pass attempts, maybe maybe he can get to that number. Uh, but if, I'm just saying if he's quarterback for the whole game uh, with lots of attempts, I, I, that, that's that's stretching it to get to Milrow or McCarthy kind of numbers. Yeah, uh, yeah seven passes a game might be might be tough uh unless it's like a penn state 2023 type situation when you can completely stop the other team's quarterback and they can't hit the broad side of a barn and um you don't really have to pass much then you just pass to keep them honest right 
Yeah, yeah. And so, so you know, for Rashad and for everyone in the audience here, what I'm talking about is if Orgy's in for half the game, basically. Okay. Okay. Seven passes. Denegal's in, and he's passing it 17 times to add up to 24. That, the, the, right. That's kind of the math. Uh, watch the video for more details, but but I kind of do it on an Excel spreadsheet so you can kind of see. If they did that, they could basically match the passing efficiency rating of, of uh, McCarthy. Um, one thing that they're not going to match, another thing that that I think is impossible to, to match McCarthy's numbers is uh, interceptions. Mm-hmm. You know, McCarthy threw three interceptions in one game and one yep. other interception the entire year. I right. find it really laughable when we when we... <laughs> When you look at, um, you know, I've been watching kind of JJ, uh, you know, where is JJ going to be drafted? And people are talking about the almost interception against Alabama. Yeah. As if it was almost. Thing. It was it, close, it but no cigar. And that's all they could find, you know, that, you know, in terms <laughs> of, you know, so, so uh, we're not going to replicate that. You know, one thing that we should be accept is that maybe we'll have roughly half an interception per game, even against weaker teams, whatever. It's just going to happen. Their balls are going to get tipped, whatever. I, I, we just got – we were very fortunate to only have four interceptions all last year. Um, so, so yeah, look look, look for um, – if you can keep the denominator low, my point is maybe Orgy can be a higher you know, percentage passer. So everyone should watch out for Smash the Numbers, right, your new series for analytics on Michigan football, Voice of College Football, right? Yeah, I appreciate that. I, uh, you know, like I said, I, I recorded an 18 minute video launching tomorrow. Uh, Mark, the godfather of, uh, of this channel is, is going to launch it for, for us uh, tomorrow. So uh, looking forward to getting your reaction uh, to this uh, when we premiere it. Speaking of Mark, everybody tomorrow night, uh, mark, your, mark your calendar because tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So same time as my Ocho show, same time as this show. Tomorrow, just keep that time slot open and uh, join us for the state of the voice of college football uh, with Mark Rogers and the community where we're going to be talking not about college football. We're going to be talking about the channel and the network as a whole and some of the things that we're going to be uh, working on over the next few months. Uh, I'm really excited about it. So uh, so join us on the main channel tomorrow at uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern for the State of Voice of College Football with Mark. And also, we are relaunching the Texas channel. That's right, folks. The Texas channel at the Voice of College Football. We will have a launch party April 8th at, uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, um, so those of you who like Texas or like to hear about Texas Longhorns football, uh, you know, they say, uh, they say don't mess with Texas. So... Don't don't mess with Texas, okay? Get on to that, you know, support the Texas channel and uh and and join us for the launch party. Um, we'll have our buddy uh Matt Miller as part of that. We'll have Mark, um, and then uh Sonny Verma, who a lot of you may have seen uh in some of his Big Ten content, the Illini cast. I've been on his show a couple of times. He's also gonna be contributing to Texas. So it's going to be, um, you know, we're really all hands on deck to, to launch this uh, Texas channel. And I'm excited for the September uh, crossover when we will have the Michigan-Texas uh, game. Uh, so we'll be able to do some crossover content with the Texas channel. Very excited about all of that. 